Oh, let's set x equal to something. Let me set this here. X, I want... What do we want x, guys? Let's set it equal to 90, a boundary condition for you boundary testers. Okay, step through this. So, x is equal to 90. Which one of these conditions is going to get executed? If x is greater or equal to 90, I think that's the one, right? You guys are right, so you get an A. And that's it. Terminates. What if we set X equal to 69? Okay. Which one of these is going to get executed? Come on, you brainiacs. For those of you that said this one, you're wrong. Because it's going to be, look, not that one, not that one. It's going to be the else condition. The else condition is executed no matter what. If none of the other conditions are true, then you want to execute an else condition, which in our case covered everything except these scenarios. So this message gets executed, and that's the else condition. You use it as a final. Let me get to the section. You use it as a final option for your if statements to execute some condition that you don't account for. So in this case, right, everything below 70, I tell the person to get out of the class because I don't care about all the other conditions, whether it's they get a 69 or they get a negative 100. This will account for it. Now, it's not always necessary. You have to do the proper logic development to make this work, but it's an option. And like you guys see, you can keep on expanding this if condition for as long as you need to cover all your scenarios. But be careful. Don't create too many if conditions. It becomes hard to track and hard to figure out what's going on. Okay?